This is the SAD match with calculator practice test 6. Let's get started. Let's look at the first question. Which of the expressions is equivalent to this? 2x squared minus 4 plus 3x squared minus 2x plus 7. Uh, these two will add up to 5x squared. So we have up here from this and this. Um, this is cancelled out. We got minus 2x. This has to be the answer in that case. Alright, let's go to the B part. This seems pretty self explanatory. The graph above shows the positions of Paul and Mark during the race. Paul and Mark each ran at a constant rate, and Mark was given a head start to shorten the distance he needed to run. Paul finished the race in 6 seconds and mark finished the race in 10 seconds even though he had a head start all right according to the graph mark was given a head start of how many yards so at time t equals to zero paul starts from distance zero and mark starts from here each interval is supposedly six so 18 yards that would be our answer all right let's go to the next question question three snow fell and stopped for it for the time when the snow began to fall again, it fell at a faster rate than it had initially. Assuming that none of the snow melted during the time indicated, which of the following graphs could model the total accumulation of snow versus time? None of it has melted. Um, so accumulation in the second part would be way higher, so the slope's gotta be more. This won't be so because accumulation is stopping in the between. We'll have something of this. It cannot go down that would be the answer um, this is supposed to be it because the slope accumulation later on will be more since the rate uh, initially is less right let's go to the first one of website hosting service charges business businesses and overtime setup fee of three fifty dollars plus d dollars for each month if a business owner paid thousand and ten dollars for the first 12 months including the setup fee what is the cost of d it's pretty easy minus 350 that'll be six six sixty so he pays six sixty dollars for um 12 months so 12d that'd be 660 divided by 12 which is 55 so the answer is d all right let's go to the next question fifth which of the following inequalities is equivalent to the inequality above? First, let's simplify it, divide by 3. So that would give us 3x minus 3y is more than 4. Uh, that doesn't look like... Okay, that's 2x. 3 divided by 6 divided by 3 is 2. Right, that, my bad. Okay. 2x minus 3y is more than 4. So that's supposed to be our answer. Pretty easy. All right, let's move to the next page. Question six, where do people get most of their medical information? Sources, they've given a lot of sources and percentage of those surveyed. The table above shows a summary of 1200 responses. Based on the table, how many of those surveyed got most of their medical information from either a doctor or the internet? Okay, just add up doctor and internet, we get 76% um, times 76 this would give us 36 by 100 into 1200 is 912 so the answer is c All right let's move to the seventh question the members of a city council wanted to assess the opinions of all city residents about converting an open field into a dog park the council surveyed a sample of 500 citizen residents who owns do own dogs the survey showed that the majority of those samples were in favor of a dog park. Of course, they have dogs. Which of the following is true about the city council survey? It shows that the majority of the city residents are in favor of the dog park now because they have only surveyed those who own dogs. The sample, the survey sample should have included more residents who are dog owners. Not really. The survey sample should have consisted entirely of residents. No, it should be mixed. It's biased because it's not representative of all citizens. Yeah, that's true. It should have included both dog and non-dog owners. Well, let's move to the next. Okay, the question. Let's go to question eight. The table above shows the flavors of ice cream. Okay, vanilla and chocolate chosen by people at a party. 
Each person chooses one flavor of ice cream and one topping, either hard fudge or caramel. Um, so of the people who chose vanilla, so eight plus five thirteen. Um, what fraction chose hot fudge as a topping? So eight. So eight by thirteen. Um, D. All right. Let's go to question nine. The total area of a coastal city is ninety two point one square miles, of which eleven point three square miles is water. Okay. So ninety two point one minus eleven point three would give us eighty point eight. If the city had a population of six twenty one thousand people, the year twenty ten, which of the following is closest to the population density in people per square mile of land area? This is land area, and we're asked population density per square mile of the city at that time. So we divide the number of people divided by the area. So six twenty one thousand by eighty point eight. And that would give us seven six eight five. That's close to be yeah seven six eight five. So it's approximately seven six nine zero. All right, let's move to the next page. Question ten between fourteen ninety seven and fifteen hundred, Amerigo Vespucci embarked on two voyages to the New World. According to Vespucci's letters, the first voyage lasted 43 days longer than the second voyage okay the first one lasted 43 days longer than the second voyage and the two voyages combined lasted a total of 1003 days so 1003 days uh, is equal to the duration of the first voyage is 43 days more than the second voyage so second voyage is x and the first voyage is x plus 43 how many days did the second voyage last we just solve it 960 is equal to 2x x is equal to 480 answer is p all right let's look at the 11th one for the solution x and y to the system of equations about what is the value of x minus y all right um Maybe you you can just plug this in your calculator, uh, and into simultaneous equations, seven x plus three y is eight, and the second equation, six x minus three y. Is equal to five. The value of x will be one, and the value of y is given, one by three. So x minus y is one minus one by three. That is one minus one by three is two by three, which is b. All right, let's go to the next part. Question 12 to 14 refer to the following information. Sunflower growth. We have days and intervals of, I'm guessing, 7. Yeah, consistently 7, 0, 7, 14, 21. All right. And the height of the sunflower over time. In 1999, HSC and R.H. Holland published a paper on the growth of sunflowers. Sunflowers included in the paper were the table and the graph above, which showed the height h in centimeters of a sunflower t days after the sunflower began to grow. Over which of the following time periods is the average growth of the sunflower least? So, average growth of the sunflower is least. Uh, so, if you are asked rate, then we will look at slope, and the slope is least uh, from day 77 to 84, I'm guessing, because it's almost a straight line. Um, is that so or okay um so in that case i think it would be 63 which starts over here to 84 because that's one option we have given this is almost uh, sorts of a straight line not exactly 42 to 63 is still sloped it's all our slope so this would be the least uh time period yeah this would be the least the function h is defined by h t so height is defined by a t plus b where a and b are constants okay we don't know that uh models 
the height in t centimeters in centimeters of the sunflower t days of growth after t days of growth during the time period in which the growth is approximately linear what is e represent e represents the slope right so because y equals to mx plus c and in this case t is x so this is supposed to supposedly m so the predicted number of option a is the predicted number of centimeters the sunflower grows each day during the period does this seem right um maybe yeah because it does uh, say something about the rate right each day during the period is rate the predicted height in centimeters of the sunflower at the beginning no that would probably be b the predicted height in centimeters of the sunflower at the end of the period no uh, the predicted total increase in height of the sunflower during the period no so the answer is most likely a all right let's move to the next page and the next question so question 14 the growth rate of the sunflower from day 14 to day 35 is nearly constant on this interval which of the following equations best models the height h in centimeters of the sunflower t days after it begins to grow so we have to find the equation uh, yeah between day 14 and day 35 let me bring up the table over here all right so now that we have the table let's look at day 14 to 35 so 14 is over here and 35 is over here so we'll just put it down as x and y right so for value of x as 14 we have 36.36 and at 35 we've got 131.00 let's find the gradient that's basically all we need to do to get this answer 36.36 35 minus 14 y2 minus y1 x2 x2 minus x1 131 minus 36.36 divided by 35 minus 14 that gives us 4.506 that's close to this so the answer should be b all right let's go to 15th one um all right um this is the following equation relates to what relates y to x for the values in the table below should be simple substitution let's just try to do that um, for the first one let's plug in a value one two three four and five let's see if that's the correct answer one by two into five by two raised to one is five by four that's not the correct answer so this is wrong let's see for the second one so we have 2 into 3 by 4 raised to x uh, just taking 1 it's giving us 3 by 2 so that's not the right answer either for the fourth one it's 1 plus 2 3 by 4 plus 2 3 by 4 plus 2 it's 11 by 4 that is giving us a correct answer let's see if we um, get the correct answer for the other value too 7 by 2 so that's not correct so this is not correct all right let's try d 7 by 2 into 1 minus 3 by 4 11 by 4 seems correct let's try for another value of x with now let's take x as 2 we get 25 by 4 so d is correct all right let's move to the 16th one triangles a b c and d e f are shown above they're not similar don't look similar i think so which of the following is equal to the ratio BC to AB? BC, AB. So we do need to check, right? So 90 plus 58, uh, 148 over here, plus 32, I'm guessing, is going to give us 180. Yeah, um, so they are similar triangles, which means this angle is 52, 58. Could have just simply done that but still uh which of the following is equal to the ratio b c to a b so 58 is the one that's connected to the hypotenuse over here right so this one this and this 
and we have BC, right? So BC in that case would be DF. Um, because not the hypotenuse, we can't select this edge. It's, BC is not the hypotenuse, so it's supposed to be DF and DF. We have these two choices and divide by AB. AB is the hypotenuse. It should simply be DE, so the obvious answer would be B. All right, let's move to the next question. Question 70 to 19 refers to the following information. When designing a stairway, an architect can use the riser tread formula to S plus D is equal to 25, where riser is the, riser is the height and tread depth is D. All right. And the total rise is also given. I'm not sure where that's over here. Okay. Inches. For any given stairway, the riser heights are the same and the tread depths are same for all steps in the stairway. So these values won't change for any of these steps. Obviously, the number of steps in a stairway is the number of its risers. Correct. It's total rise divided by riser height. For example, there are five steps in the stairway in the figure above. Okay. The total rise of the of a stairway is given is the sum of the riser heights shown in the figure. All right. Which of the following expression expresses the riser height? Okay. This in terms of tread depth. That's an interesting question. Let me just erase this. Okay, we already have this though. So we just have to go through that. So express the riser height, which is 2h plus t is equal to 25 in terms of. So we have to get the equation in terms of h. Okay, so 25 minus d. Bring this here, divide by 2, h is equal to this, uh, which is this one, 25 minus d half of that all right 18 some building codes require that for indoor stairways the tread depth must at least be nine inches more than equal to nine and the riser height must be so t is more than and riser height must be at least five inches according to the riser tread formula which of the following inequalities represents the set of all possible values for the riser height, that means this core requirement. Okay, we already had riser height from the previous question. We had this 25 minus D, right? So, if the trap de depth must be more than equal to 9, for now, we can just take the value 9 and check what we are getting. If I minus 9, and half of that, that would be 16 divided by 2, which is equal to 8. Right? And let's assume if the value of D is more than 9. Let's take, for example, 12, 25 minus 12. 13 divided by 2 which would give us 6.5 6.5 but um, okay, the height has to be more than 5 this would match but as we keep on increasing the value for D the value for H will keep on decreasing so an acceptable value for H Hmm. Would be starting at 8. And how low can we go? We can either... We can go, I think, all the way down up to 5. 
because that's the minimum value. So this must be the answer. All right. 19. An architect wants to use the riser tread formula to design a stairway with a total rise of 9 feet. All right. 9 feet. Uh, a riser height between 7 to 8 inches and an odd number of steps. That's interesting. With the architect's constraints, which of the following must be the tread depth in inches of the stairway? Okay, 1 foot is 12 inches, so 9 into 12. 108 so that would be about 108 inches right so for a question like this where we don't have a definite riser height um, we might just continue substituting our answers to see which one matches because if we have h is equal to 1 by 2 25 minus d Let's substitute 25 minus 7.2 and we'll find our riser height. 1 by 2, 25 minus D minus 7.2. For the first one, it's going to give us 8.9. So 8.9 is not an acceptable riser height. So that's not a good answer. That's the wrong answer. Let's go with B. 1 by 2, 25 minus 9.5. This gives us 7.75 inches. In theory, that does work. Let's check for the next one. We have 10.6. That gives us 7.2 inches. So yeah, in theory, that does work as well. And D1, if we subtract 15 and divide by 2, the answer is 5. So that doesn't work because... The riser height has to be again between 7 and 8 inches so if we have a riser height of 9.5 uh, inches let's divide that by 108 so 108 divided by 9.5 would give us 11.36 okay that's the tread depth we don't want to look at the tread depth Let's look at the height. The riser height with this 9.5 is 1 by 2, 25 minus 9.5 once again. That's 7.75. Let me just erase this so it becomes less confusing. Okay. And... For this one, it will be the riser height will be 7.2. Let's divide 108 by 7.5, 7.75. That would give us 13.9. And okay, this definitely doesn't look like the right answer, but let's divide it by. 7.2 anyways and when we do this we get 15 so 15 is an odd number so it's likely to be c the answer is suppose will be c because we get an odd number of steps which is 15 and it matches all right let's move to the next question over here we have 20 question 20 what is the sum of the solutions do this okay On the brackets x minus 6 x minus 6 x plus point oh seven is equal to 0 that will be x square minus 6 x plus 0 point 7 x minus point 7 into 6 which is 4.2 is equal to 0 so x square minus 6 minus 6 x so minus 6 plus 0 point 7 that would be minus 5.3 x minus 4.2 is equal to 0 solve the quadratic minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4 ac by 2a what we get is minus 4.2 we get x is equal to 6 and 
especially you could do minus 0.7 so these are the two answers we get and the sum of the solutions so these two are the solutions the sum of this would be 6 minus 0 0.7 which is 5.3 so the answer is c all right let's go to the 21st one a study was done on the weights of different types of fish in a pond a random sample of fish were caught and marked in order to ensure that none were weighed more than once the sample contained 150 large mouth bass of which 30 weighed more than two pounds 30 percent weighed more than two pounds which of the following conclusions is best supported by the sample sample data of the majority of all the fish in the pond weigh less than two pounds pounds uh, the sample contained more fifteen large so majority of all the fish so there's only one type of fish that's the large mouth bass weigh less than th 2 pounds yeah that's true because only 30% weigh more than 2 pounds sounds correct let's read through the others anyways the average weight of all the fish in the pond is approximately 2 pounds no approximately 30% of all fish in the pond weigh more than 2 pounds this that's actually sounds true let's go through it again just read the deep part as well approximately 30% of all large mouth bass in the pond weigh more than two pounds so yeah this is this is most accurate even if i didn't in this case understand the question very well there might be other type of fish in the pond but this sample only had 150 large mouth bass so this is what should be correct question 22 number of states with 10 or more electoral electoral votes in 2008 All right. In 2008, there were 21 states with 10 or more electoral votes. Shown in the table above. So the summation of all the frequencies or the sum of all the frequencies is 21. All right. Based on the table, what is was the median number of electoral votes for the 21 states all right so if we want to do the median we do we keep adding it like this 4 plus 4 plus 4 8 8 plus 1 9 9 plus 1 10 10 plus 3 13 14 15 6 17 18 19 20 and 21 now 21 divided by 2 is equal to 10 point five um, so we look at which class over here falls between definitely these two we'll have the ten point fifth one right um, so electoral votes so the one with thirteen electoral votes this has all the values up till ten the one which is all uh the one with between 10 to 13 would fall under 15 then over here because the range for um, this one is 9 to 10 but the range for this one with 15 electoral votes is 10 to 13 so the answer should be 15 all right let's move to the next question height versus time for a bouncing ball as part of an experiment, a ball was dropped and allowed to bounce repeatedly off the ground until it came to rest. The graph above represents the relationship between the time lapsed after the ball was dropped and the weight of the ball above the ground. Alright, uh, after it was dropped, how many times was the ball at a height of 2 feet? Let's just look at it again. It was at a height of two feet after it was dropped. So after it is dropped, it reaches a height of two feet over here, comes back, bounces, goes higher, goes down, one, two, three, goes down again, 
and over here it doesn't reach a height of two feet right so there's only three occasions where it reaches a height of two feet so we'll mark the answer as three all right let's move to the 24th question a customer's monthly water bill was 75.74 due to a rate increase her monthly bill is now 79.86 due to the nearest tenth or uh, to the nearest tenth of a percent by what percent did the amount of customers water bill increase so we just do 79.86 minus 75.74 divided by the original which is 75.74 times 100 and this would give us 78.86 minus 0 0.74 75.74 times 100 which is 5.439 and that is D all right let's move to the next question a all right let's go to the 25th question some values of the linear function f are shown in the table above what is the value of f of 3 okay um we really don't have that in this table um let's just try plotting it at zero f of x is minus two so over here at two it is four over here so it's passing a bit like this in fact and at 6 somewhere it's 16 um doesn't really look like it's uh, a curve a parabola or anything just a straight line in which case we can just find the gradient right and we already have the y-intercept which is minus 2 so the gradient would be 16 minus 4 y to minus y1 6 minus 2 that's going to be 12 minus 4 uh just give me a second uh yeah we're correct we're correct 4 1 3 okay 3 so y equals to mx 3x minus 2 and when we substitute 3 we get 9 minus 2 which is equal to 7 Answer is B. All right, let's move to the next question. 26th. A gear ratio R is to S is the ratio of the number of teeth of two connected gears. The ratio of the number of revolutions per minute of the two gear wheels is S by R. Okay, so we have two ratios over here. The first one is the number of teeth, which is R is to S, and the rotations per minute is opposite, which is S is to R. Alright, so let's, um, okay, what we're concerned here is the rotations per minute, right? But to get to that ratio, we'll have to first see the ratio of the teeth. Which in this case is 20 to 60. I'll just write it down as 2 is to 6. But the ratio for since these two are the teeth and this rotations per minute are switched up, it will be 6 is to 2 for the rotations per minute. So this would be is to be. And we have A with the rotate 100 rotations. Right, so if six is hundred, let's just cross multiply two hundred divided by six. That will give us thirty three point three three RPM for gear B. All right, now let's look at the ratio of teeth between B and C. Sixty is to ten. And the ratio simplified this would be 6 is to 1 and when we switch it up to get the ratio of the RPM we would get 1 is to 6 and we have B and here C 33.33 you know 6 33.33 times 6 is 
199.98 approximately C that should be the right answer now right, let's look at 27th question the xy plane the graph of this is a circle what is the radius of the circle so we'll have to complete the square over here okay so let's take two common over here x square minus 3x plus 2y square plus y equals to 45 take the half of this that is x minus 1.5 the whole square and 1.5 square is 2.25 so minus 1.5 square would be that 2.25 um, we still have 2 over here outside plus um, the same thing over here 2 and the half of 1 is 0 0.5 0 0.5 square would be 1 by 4 so we'd have y by 0 0.5 the whole square minus 0.25 all in brackets equal to 45 here okay, let's open this now so 1.5 the whole square and this is 4.5 plus This would still be plus. That was a mistake I made. Um, half of that and square it. 1 by 4 square is 0.5. That, there's no reason for that to be minus. This would be 0 0.5 is equal to 45. Let me see if we go ahead and expand this. So x square minus 2ab. So 2 into 1.5 that would be 3. x and 1.5 square. As we just did, that was 9 by 2.5. And we would have 2 outside, so that will give us 2x squared minus 6x plus 4.5. So we, because we have 4.5 here, this should have been minus. Both of these are to be minus so that we can balance the equation. It says two points on a number line are worth three units from the point with coordinate minus four. So we have a number line and they are both three units away. So that could be minus seven or that could be uh, minus one. Yeah, the solution to which of the following equation gives the coordinates of both points. Right, so when we solve these, we need to square them, right? So x plus 4, the whole square, is equal to 3 square, which is 9. So x plus 4 is equal to root 9, which is plus minus 3. So x is equal to plus minus 3 minus 4, 
the answers to that would be one would be minus seven and the other would be minus one this most likely seems like a good answer so let's put this as right and move to the next one x minus four the whole square is equal to nine again root nine so plus minus three x minus four and this wouldn't be correct because the answers would be seven which is not in this range and that would be the same case for i think all the other options c and d so a is the correct option let's move to the next page okay 29 more a motor powers a model car so that after starting from rest the car travels s inches in t seconds where s is equal to 16 t the root t which of the following gives the average speed of the car in inches per second or first t seconds after it starts all right so we know speed is equal to distance by time and travels s inches then this is the distance so 16 t by root t and time would just be t so we cancel this out it would be 16 root t and this would be the average speed all right let's go to the 30th question the scatter plot below shows the amount of electric energy generated in millions of megawatts megawatt hours by nuclear sources over a 10 year period so it does increase uh, that it decreases all right on the following equation the following equation which best models the data in the square plot so it's definitely a parabola and it's supposedly negative because it's facing downwards right so either this or this now um what we could do is substitute maybe one of these values let's take six and about 800 just estimating it to be 800 over here so six and 800 so 800 is equal to checking for this one right now minus 1.674 into 6 square minus 19.76 into something seems off with this unit 6 minus 745.73 so our answer with this with this one would most definitely be a negative answer and that's not the case with us because 800 is positive most definitely so d seems like the more likely option let's just substitute uh it in d uh the only things that change in d are instead of becoming minus this becomes plus and this also becomes plus so minus 1.674 into 6 square plus 19.76 into 6 plus 7 45.73 uh, yeah that brings it about to 804 and 800 was an approximate value anyway so d seems like the right answer okay let's go to the next page this is fill in the grid all right so 31st question a group of friends decide to give divide uh, the $800 of a trip equally among themselves. When two of the friends decided not to go on the trip, those remaining still divided the 800 cost equally. We don't know the number of friends, but we just know two of them backed out. But each friend's share of the cost increased by $20. How many friends were there in the group originally? All right, so... So, originally, each of them had to pay, let's assume X to be the amount they have to pay, and N is the number of people, would be 800, but now they have to pay X plus 20, 
um, n minus 2 um, the so cost is equal to 800 um, all right so simplify the equation below x plus 20 solving it um, and x plus 20 n minus 20 x minus 40 is equal to 800 correct uh, and since both of these equate to 800 we'll have nx plus 20 n minus 2 x minus 40 is equal to x n and x n here and here will cancel out we'll have Now we solve this polynomially on the calculator and we get n is equal to 10. So these are the number of people that were there originally. Alright, let's move to the next question. And now on to the next page. Question 33. A laboratory company supply company produces graduated cylinders each with an internal radius of 2 inches and an internal height between 7.75 and 8. Uh, with what is one possible volume rounded to the nearest cubic inch of the graduate cylinder? produced by this company so it's a cylinder it's a circle pi r square h and h we can take any value between 7.5 and 8 so let's take 7.8 into pi into r square that's 2 square and uh, all of it is in inches so we'll have pi into 2 square into 7.8 which would be 98.017 um, we could put this down as 98.02 let's go to the 34th question uh, but we have this rounded to, to the nearest cubic inch so that would be 98 let's go to the 34th question in the xy plane the graph of y is equal to 3x square minus 14x intersects with the graph of y is equal to x um, so we just put it down as this minus 14x it intersects at 0 0 and a a 0 0 is the origin so we're basically assigned to find solutions uh, this will be minus 15x is equal to 0 solve this polynomially um, and we get 3x square minus 15x will give us x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 0 so a the value for a would be 5 let's move on to the next one. okay we have question 35 the line with the equation 4 by 5 x plus 1 by 3 y is graphed in the x y plane what is the x coordinate of the x intercept uh, let's bring this back to standard form basically this um, 12 by 5 3 15 plus 5 12x 5y is equal to 1 12x plus 5y is equal to 15 5y uh, is equal to minus 12x plus 15 
y is equal to minus 12 by 5x plus 3. What is the x coordinate of the x intercept of the line? x intercept is when y is 0. So find uh, x when y is 0. That's basically what they were asking. Uh, 0. Alright, so that's that's supposed to be the answer. Five by four should be the answer and let's go to the next question. So next question thirty six says Andrew and Maria each collected six rocks and the above uh table shows the masses of the rocks. The mean of the masses of the rocks Maria collected is point one kgs. Uh greater than the mean of the masses of the rocks Andrew collected. What is the value of x? Alright, let's look at the 37th question. Jeremy deposited X dollars in his investment account on Jan 1st, 2001. The amount of money in the account doubled each year until Jeremy had $480 in his account on Jan 1st, 2005. So if the amount is doubling each year, then that's 100% uh, it's increasing by 100% each year. So our amount will be B bracket 1 plus R is 100 upon 100 uh, raised to T, which is so from 2001 to 2002 is one year, 2002 to 2003, 2003 to 4, and four to five one year two years three years and that's a term of four years so four so we need to find p when we know um this was 480 480 is equal to 100 by 100 is one so two raised to four which is again um uh, Two, two raised to three is eight. So eight to sixteen, sixteen. So four eighty by sixteen is equal to p, and that means the value for p would be four eighty by sixteen, which is thirty. 
we could plug this value back and check if we get the right answer or I'll just do it manually 30 30 in the first year in the second year that will be 60 in the third year that will be 120 in the fourth year that will be 240 but we have a term of uh, so it's gonna be 30 here goes to 60 60 goes to 120 um, 120 becomes 240 and till here it becomes 480 right um, on Jan 2001 it's $30 and Jan 2002 it's 60 Jan 2003 it's 120 Jan 2004 it's 240 and Jan 2005 it's 480 so the answer is 3 30 all right so let's go to the next question a school district is forming a committee to discuss plans of construction of a new high school of those invited to join the committee 15 percent are parents of students 45 percent are teachers from the current high school 25 percent are school and district district administrators and the remaining six individuals are students how many more teachers were invited to join how many more teachers were invited to join the committee than school and district administrators all right so we have 15 percent parents 45 percent teachers 25 percent school and district administrators we add this up and we have 15 and 4 5 6 7 8 6 yeah so and the six remaining ones would be then 15 percent six students are 15 percent um so how many more teachers were invited so teachers are 45 percent so let's find how many teachers were there that's 45 times 6 divided by 15 and that would be 18 so there's 18 teachers and how school and district administrators are 25 percent so again um 25 percent that's fine x 25 into 6 divided by 15 that will give us 10 and the difference between this is 8 so answer is 8 difference between 18 and 10 is 8 which is the answer and this is the sad maths calculator part solved